So today I'm going to talk about eight things you need to know about subcompact light bearing holsters. So you have one of the new generation of subcompact pistols, such as the Sig Sauer P365, the Glock G43XMOS, or the Springfield Hellcat, or a number of others, and you're either thinking about getting a weapon mounted light or you already have one. Well, here's what you need to know about light bearing holsters for your subcompact pistol. So the first thing you need to know is that Kydex and Bolteron holsters, the type we're talking about here, are made for a specific pistol and a specific light. Nylon and leather holsters can actually deform a little bit and they can accommodate lights or pistols that are kind of about the same size or about the same shape. Not so with Kydex and Bolteron. Now you may wonder why you want a precision formed holster. Well, first, it's not gonna move around on your belt or your body quite as much. It's gonna stay in a place which helps with draw. It also helps with everyday carry comfort. The next thing is that it will actually lock into place. That means that your pistol and light should stay put even if your holster is turned upside down. That's great if you get knocked down in an altercation or you're reaching over for the, uh, the can of soup at the bottom of the grocery store shelf you'll actually be able to know that your pistol is going to stay in place. And finally, a stiff holster like a Kydex holster is going to allow you to more easily reholster. It's not going to collapse on you. That way, when you're out in the range training, you can actually get that pistol back into the holster when you need it. Now, you may look at two pistols and you may think they look similar, but they're not going to fit in the holster. Differences in the slide shape, differences in where and how that light mounts are going to make it so that a holster built for one pistol and light are not going to work with another one. Change up the light a little bit, change up the pistol a little bit, and you're going to be unhappy with the results. So unless your holster manufacturer specifies your exact pistol, your exact light, check with them first to make sure what you're running is going to fit. Aftermarket rail attachments are typically not supported unless explicitly stated by the holster manufacturer. Take, for example, the Sig Sauer P365 with the TLR7 sub. You could get an aftermarket rail attachment for it and get the TLR7 sub for the 1913. That would actually place this light a little bit lower. And as a result, a holster built for this pistol with this light is not going to work with an aftermarket rail We've had a number of questions. Why does Works not make a holster for a specific pistol, such as the P365, with either the Tactical Development or the Recover Tactical or any of the other variety of aftermarket rail attachments, and then their preferred light? Well, we spend a significant amount of R&D time working on getting each individual holster exactly correct. So it's a significant capital investment for us to create a design for your specific pistol, specific rail, and specific light. And because there are so many of these different rail attachments, and because people don't actually know exactly which one they're running a bunch of the time, people will order thinking it's for their configuration and then be unhappy when they find out it doesn't fit. So rather than having the customer service nightmare, we have chosen at this time to not develop holsters for any of the third-party aftermarket rail attachments. Now, your mileage may vary. I know that there's some holster manufacturers out there making for tactical development or recover tactical. And if that's what you're running, please look at those competitive offerings. Now, the next thing you need to know is that your trigger guard is going to be covered when viewing the holster from the side. People wonder, why is there a gap alongside that trigger guard? I can kind of peer inside and see that trigger. And heck, I've even had people say that their six-year-olds can get their finger in on the trigger. Well, that's not recommended. Please don't leave your pistol where your six-year-old can get at it. So there is space there because that light needs somewhere to travel as it goes in and out. And it's got to travel all the way through and then snap into place. Well, what that means is since the light is wider than the trigger guard, that there's going to be a little bit of space there. 
So you might wonder, why do we not put a bunch of material all the way back so that somebody can't get something in there on that trigger? Well, first, if you're determined, you're gonna be able to get something in on the trigger. The second thing is, is that it is important when you're wearing a holster, when you're wearing a pistol, to be able to get in on the pistol properly with a shooting grip before you draw your pistol. We clearance in here so that you can get your hand in on the pistol without undue interference from the kydex. We're treading a line that allows you to get in on your holster, on your pistol, without having that interference. So you're going to have sufficient protection for that trigger. So you should be able to set this on your nightstand and reach for it without inadvertently putting your finger inside the trigger guard but we should still have enough room for you to come in and get a full and proper grip before you draw your pistol. If you're graduating to a light bearing holster from a non light bearing holster, be aware that your non light bearing holster probably retained off the front of the trigger guard. That allows it to get a very good click and a clean draw. So light bearing holsters are a little more challenging because the back of the light has the switches and has a bunch of sharp edges. So we have to choose carefully where and how we retain. Many holster manufacturers will actually just squeeze on the edges of the light and use friction to retain your pistol and light in place. And that's fine. You will typically not get a click in such cases. Now it works, we spend time trying to get that positive click in retention and we succeed on most pistols and lights. Some others are a little more challenging. The TLR7 and TLR7 Sub are notoriously hard to get that click. So this particular holster has a fair amount of click, but you may not get as robust a click as you would experience with a non-light bearing holster. That's normal. Your pistol should still retain with a light shake upside down though. You may need to adjust your accessories and your retention to suit your needs. Now when looking at our holster, for instance, you see that this clip has a number of positions that it can go into. That allows you to adjust for carry height or maybe adjust for cant depending upon how and where you're carrying it. It also has some accessory holes. That allows you to attach other accessories. Now, if you're looking to tuck your shirt, for instance, then maybe you want the C-hooks that come up from the bottom and wrap around your belt, allowing you to tuck your shirt between your clips and your holster. Alternately, if you're looking for a way to positively keep this on your belt, maybe you want to use the soft straps, which come underneath and then snap on. Those are just a couple of the accessories that holster manufacturers such as Works provide. So now your particular body type, your particular carry style may also need to adjust the retention. In the case of the works holsters, we have two retention screws and those allow you to adjust retention on these spacers here to get more or less retention. So if you want more retention, you screw them in a little bit more. If you want less, you back them out a little bit. Now be aware since your pistol and holster are always on you, they're gonna move around a little bit with your body. This means that the screws may loosen up over time. So my recommendation is, is when you're about ready to go put your pistol on for the day, just make sure that things seem tight, that your screws aren't backing out. And you know, if you actually get this set up exactly the way you want, and you're gonna leave it that way for a while, go ahead and get some thread locker, apply it, and then retension those screws exactly where you need it. This will help make sure that your holster doesn't disassemble itself while you're wearing it. Your holster is going to be thicker than a non-light bearing holster. As we talked about earlier, your holster with a light requires a channel for that light to travel through. That is going to make this holster thicker in this dimension than it otherwise would have been. And then on top of that, You've got perhaps some accessory areas and some other items that are attached, and that's going to add some bulk as well. And then finally, you've got the thickness of the thermoform material adding to that. Now it works, we've decided on 093 material, which we believe provides the optimum balance between that quality feel, 
the retention qualities we want, the ability to maintain its shape even when worn inside the waistband for reholstering, and it's not too darn thick and bulky feeling. In addition, your light bearing holster is going to be wider when viewed from this angle. It's going to have retention screws in this case, maybe a claw, and all these items are going to hang out on the width. In addition, the works holsters have a fairly tall sight channel that allow for tall suppressor height sights and then some. One of the reasons we decided to increase the width just a tiny bit for a taller sight channel is not only to allow for those taller sights, but it also provides a little bit of spring, which allows for some variance in the slide width. Say you're running an aftermarket slide or may do that someday, and maybe that manufacturer does not mill that to the exact width of the manufacturer specs. This allows for a little bit more flex, so your holster should fit properly. And we do know from experience that some slides are actually too wide and would bind up if it were not for the additional springiness that we get out of making that sight channel just a tad bit taller. Expect to get some finish wear on your pistol and your light. In terms of hardness, Kydex and Bolteron are both softer than the finishes on your slide. However, over time, we get dust, dirt, grime, either on our pistols or inside our holsters. That causes a little bit of wear on the slide and potentially the light. That's normal. This particular pistol has been in and out of holsters probably thousands of times. I think it looks great even with that battle-worn finish, but you're going to have to decide for yourself. The truth is, even leather and nylon holsters will both wear the finish on your pistol. The problem is that leather and nylon are pretty hard to wash. Plastic, on the other hand, just requires a damp cloth and you're good to go. Hopefully some of these items will help you understand what to look for when you buy your next holster for your subcompact pistol with a light. Now, if you are in the market for a light bearing holster, I invite you to check out what we've got at works.com, use our holster finder, and see if we have the products that you need. This is Shan Hempel with Works LLC. Thank you so much and have a blessed day.